has allowed only six hits, but all of them have figured in the scoring. Four of them for extra bases. He's walked three in all of those in Twins scoring innings, so they've really bunched them. The sign in reference to the negotiations during the offseason that might have brought Morris to the Twins as a free agent. John Grubb pinch hitting for Heath hitting in the ninth spot, which will mean Sparky Anderson will lose his DH. His catcher, DH and Noakes in the five spot, will go to catch. The pitcher who comes in will hit in the ninth spot. Might not even come about. He could pinch hit for him if he gets the pitch. But Sparky did in the third game up at Exhibition Stadium. Pinch hit Bergman, and Henneman had to hit. It was a game, one of the games that Toronto came back and won. So Sparky playing with that DH today and see if it affects the game. Sparky figuring that this late in the game, he's got enough bats on the bench that even if he has to pinch hit several times, this won't burn him. Yep, that's what he thought in the third game up at Exhibition Stadium, and Henneman came to the place. <laughs> Broken bat, Gaetti goes to one knee, hustles up, and Herbeck oh, with an extraordinary my. play! Both ends. gold glove. Maybe Herbeck should. If you want to generalize, usually an infielder goes better to his glove side. Not Gaetti. He goes better to his offside, to his right. Off balance, sprung to his feet, grub, left-handed, doesn't run as well as he once did, but still it's a scribble. Look at Gaetti, way off the line. He's got to go four, maybe five. It was an artificial service play that he knows he couldn't plant his feet, so he came to a skid stop on his knee. And look at this reaction. Herbeck on the other and great. Whitaker swings at the first one and lines it foul. Are they putting on a show tonight and last night for the hometown folks? One and one, the Tigers are down to five outs, trailing 6-2 as they bat here in the top of the eighth. I don't think you could have found many objective baseball men who wouldn't say before this game that the deck was stacked in favor of the Tigers. With Morris going and with all their left-handed power against Lyman. That one balancing factor that we've mentioned and you started off last night telecasting it, the extraordinary home record the team can balance it in the twins' favor and it has done it all year long, no matter what the other factors are. And it is no small factor that in the alternating system, this is the year for the American League West to have four of the seven at home. Here's a long drive off Whitaker's bat. Brunanski turns, but this one is up over the canvas and against those rolled up bleachers for a home run. Second of the night for the Tigers. Lemon hit one earlier. It's six to three. Well, they needed something to excite their team against Bly Levin, who has really shut them down over the last Five innings plus. Bird has seen this before. Got the ball, looked like a little down to Whitaker, inside part of the plate. I mean, Whitaker, when he first came up, didn't pull the ball as much as he has the last two years. The strikeout total has gone up because of it, but he's being more of a one producer. for a hit. Brunanski quickly toward the line, going to hold this to a single with Evans' lack of speed and the game situation coming into play. And very quickly popping out of the bullpen. He's only had a few throws. There's a man warming up for Tom Kelly, and they're going to stall for a little time because he had not thrown too many. So Kelly singles for the conference while Juan Berenguer 
begins to throw. They're just trying to buy a little time, getting more pitches as Bly Levin was pushed hard early, had the high pitch total we showed you. Kelly perhaps going to stall for a little more time. Kelly just signed at the division championship to a new one-year contract at nearly double the salary. I haven't seen the same of what Kelly was doing. He's looking over his shoulder to get a verbal sign from Dick Stalmazic, the bullpen coach, whether he's ready or not. Merrill trying to break it up, comes out to say, do you want him or don't you? Making this mind up right now. Now Burke's going to have a conversation to stall for a few more pitches for Perry Garrett. He might have felt he was a little slow to hook his starter last night, letting Viola go and work to an extra man. Baron Gare and Reardon now up. Reardon's only had five or six soft tosses. And he's not going to waste as much time tonight. Number flashing by. Aaron Gare's first pitch to Gibson is a called strike. Kirk is one for seven with a walk in the series. The one hit was a homer. He struck out four times. First base, Herbeck not bothering to hold Evans on. He's going to protect the gap in the right field line. Quickly ahead of him along, too. Baron Gare has a good fastball, and he learned the split finger from Roger Craig when Craig was the pitching coach in Detroit and Baron Gare was with the Tigers. There's the last line of defense getting ready, Jeff Reardon. For those who second-guessed Kelly yesterday, this is the spot he would have loved to use Reardon. Kim Allison. A very hard throw with that front foot. Strikes out about one pretty pitch. He also walks a lot. His strikeout to walk race is about two to one. Not good. But if he walks somebody, he's got that overpowering fastball and the fork ball to strike guys out. Tigers need another base runner to bring the tying run of the plate. And how important is that play? where Gaetti and Herbeck both sparkle to start this inning now. Grubb was robbed. Whitaker followed with a homer, then Evans had a single. Two out, one on, a run home. 6-3, Minnesota. One-on-one. Now a chance to see is a 17-year-old kid in an A-league in Wausau, Wisconsin, the Midwest League years ago. Sparky had him for a while, and if ever a kid threw 100 miles an hour, it was Berenger, even at that age. But he had terrible control problems. It bounces away from Lautner, but not far enough for Evans to advance. Possibility that Berenger is only to close out this inning. And then the possibility if Reardon says he got loose enough, he really threw the ball hard, extended himself yesterday. We could see Reardon come in to close the next inning. There's an off day tomorrow, remember. The 2 1 pitch. A big chopper over the mound. Lombardozzi is right on the bag as he feels it. crossed the bag before catching the ball. Here's Grubb leading off the eighth. Gaetti to his left, or his right rather, goes down on one knee, picks it up. Now watch Herbeck. Oh, and the reaction in the dugout after that play is made. 
Well, Travel hit a bullet in the third with a man on. They converted to a 6 4 3. Herbeck made a great play to Rob Evans of a double, which turned out to be important before that. And now that one. What is happening now with Noakes behind the plate? The DH is gone. Morris now, still in the ball game, becomes the ninth place hitter. to Whitaker, plenty of time, one out. Folks, this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Gaetti, last night's hero with two home runs. He did not hit a home run tonight, despite what the graphics said. He has doubled and then been retired his next two times. Change up is well up down the left field line. Foul. Uh, Morris's reaction was something. Body English and hand and glove trying to push her foul. It was too far inside. Again, the fork ball getting him in trouble. To hit it hard, Gaetti had to pull a foul. If he tries to steer, Ferry jams himself. Look at the quick back. He has appeared a good part of these first two games to be looking away, hitting the other way, so they tried to come inside. I believe that was a fork, but it just hung up there. Look at Morris. <laughs> well, he's still got a sense of humor despite the 6-3 deficit. trouble with the good part of the day. A little fork ball. And that's hurt him. There's and a guy all hard stuff. sitting on that bench who can relate to letting that bat fly. Tony Oliva used to do it all the time. Now the Twins hitting coach. Three-time batting titleist. And maybe someday a member of baseball's Hall of Fame. One time they had bat ten batting titles in the room together. Oliva. <laughs> And Carew. This ball's well hit by Bush, but actually got it off the end of the bat. And in comes Sheridan to make the catch. So last licks for the Tigers. And it'll be Noakes, Lemon, and Sheridan. Morris waving to some family members up in the stands, but it wasn't his night. It's probably useless to try and speak over the roar of the crowd at the Metrodome. So here's Berenguer to Noakes. Reardon was up last inning, and then he sat back down. Atherton and shots it and through. It appeared that he couldn't get loose, but he's up again. So he maybe has said, I'll try it again. And he's popping some balls pretty good down in case Berenguer gets in trouble.
Full count with Lemon waiting on deck. gun he's at 93 on the last pitch now if he's on the faster gun he's up near 98 and play will be held up again as a banner or something or other has fallen on the field almost every manager that Juan Berenguer has pitched for and felt that if he could harness his remarkable stuff, he can blow hitters away left and right. He's done it to two of them already, Gibson, and now Noakes. Lemon, a strikeout, booked him on a disputed call his last time. Strike one on the fastball inside. Oh, 
Fairfax, kind of excitement on every pitch for Berenger. Whoa. something you haven't done all season? Well, we're going in with the thought that we, on May 31st, we want a doubleheader against the Detroit Tigers in Tiger Stadium. We're going in with that thought, and uh, we're just going to try to have a carryover from these games, and uh, we're going to try to take it to them. Tom, thanks very much. We'll see you in Detroit. Okay, Bob, Tony. So long. Let's go over to the other side. Don Sutton is with a very gracious Sparky Anderson. Don? All right, Bob, thank you. Sparky, I'd have to guess this is not the way you had it planned, is it? No, Don, you know you don't like to come in here and go down 0-2, and I wouldn't try to kid nobody. They're playing awful good, and they're really coming after us right now. They beat two good pitchers already that we've thrown at them, but we go home now, and I, I never say we get you home, but when we go home, I think that we'll we'll get a little better. We just, they just outplayed us. There's no question about it. There's no sense to say that we're having tough luck because we're not. Jack Morris seemed to be a little bit unnerved by Bush's steal. Do you think that affected his pitches to the next few hitters? No, Don, it really didn't. That, that never affects him. What happened was, if you'll notice, he got balls up. Yeah. He got two fork balls up, and he got a fastball, a high slider up to Laudner. He made some mistakes there, but I thought Jack tonight, Don, in all honesty, had excellent stuff. That's as good a stuff as you're going to take out there. And he made three bad pitches tonight, and they were aggressive, and they, and they attacked at those pitches. How will your guys respond to this? Real good. Uh, I, we don't have no problems in our camp right now, and, and it's 0-2, and, and they have us in, in very good position for them. I don't try to kid you, but you'll be surprised. I won't say uh, and try to get uh, one of those people say we'll be back, but believe me, our camp's safe and everything will be fine. All right. I know it's not easy. Thanks for sticking around. Sparky Anderson, he gets him back in Tiger Stadium, but he's down 2 to nothing. Back to you, Bob. All right, Don, and as Sparky has repeatedly told us this past week, Back in the early 70s with a big red machine in a situation like this, he might not have been able to smile so easily, but he's got things in perspective now as a veteran manager. And tonight's NBC Miller Lite player of the game. After a shaky start is the winning pitcher, Burt Blylevin. Miller Lite is happy to present a check for $1,000 in his name to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. The 1987 American League Championship Series has been brought to you by Miller High Life. Miller made the American way since 1855 by Buick and again this year as it has for 85 years the great American road belongs to Buick by the Prudential going above and beyond to meet your needs in insurance and other financial services and by the Polaroid Spectra 
system. Reardon struck out the side to clinch the win last night. Baron Gare does it in game two tonight. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NBC's baseball coverage is Harry Coyle. Tonight's game was produced by Ricky Diamond, directed by John Gonzalez, replay producer David Neal, replay director Bob Levy. Stay tuned for your local news, followed by The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson, and then Late Night with David Letterman, except on the West Coast, where you'll see The Cosby Show. Don't forget tomorrow night, it's Game 3 of the National League Championship Series, starting at 8 Eastern Time as the Cardinals take on the Giants at Candlestick. Vin Scully and Joe Garagiola will be on hand for the call. And Saturday afternoon from Detroit, it's Game 3 of the American League Championship Series at 1 Eastern Time. The Twins, with some breathing room, will send Les Straker to the mound. Walt Terrell will try and right the Tigers' ship. Until then, this is Bob Costas for Tony Kubek and our stat man up in the booth, Steve Horn, saying thanks for sharing in the delirious scene in Minnesota and until Saturday.